Welcome to this Pocket Navigation Project Test video. This video is about the 5V Infinite Orbit Tex Energy Power Generating Hand Crank. The device was provided by the manufacturer. We'll start with a classical unboxing. Sturdy packaging and a lifetime guarantee look promising. Open the lid for brief instructions. We'll look at the accessories first. A micro USB to USB connector allowing different charging cables to be connected. A micro USB to mini USB connector. A spare O-ring. And short instructions detailing the most important functions. Here the specifications state 5 volt at 2 ampere output. We'll come back to this later as these specs are wrong. Now to the actual device. It comes packed in this quality case which can easily be attached to a belt or rucksack. You can store accessories in the front pouch, such as these adapters. Inside there's the hand crank and the actual generator which is made of high quality aluminium. It feels very robust. The hand crank can be inserted here and the device is ready to use. A micro USB cable is attached to the device, which I'm personally not too keen on as if you don't have a compatible device, you have to use one of these adapters which involves small losses due to contact resistance, causing the charging voltage to be somewhat lower, and it also causes the whole system to be more flimsy. However, theoretically you can also remove this part as there's another micro USB socket inside. I'll demonstrate this with another device. If you unscrew the top, you will also see where the O-ring goes. It has IP65 waterproof protection and is dust tight, so you can also use it when it's raining. As you can see, it's plugged into a micro USB socket inside, so theoretically you could, for instance, use a micro USB to mini USB cable or another relevant cable directly. But you'd have to see how you deal with the screw on cap. Also, if the cable does break at some point, this feature allows it to be replaced without the entire generator being lost, as the first impression would have you believe, since it does look like a fixed cable. That's not the case though, as the cable can be replaced. We'll start with a classic example and try to charge a smartphone. We'll start at a moderate pace. At this speed there's very little resistance. You can see that the connection is at 5 volts but hardly any electricity is flowing just one milliampere. This is because the smartphone is trying to figure out what it's connected to and how much energy it can absorb, and as we're going slow, the phone considers the power source to be weak and hence only absorbs a small amount of energy to avoid overload. This means that if you want to charge the smartphone effectively, because you aren't going to charge anything at one milliampere, you have to turn the crank more quickly from the outset to let the smartphone know it's connected to a powerful energy source. We'll try it. And, instantly you see, it goes up to 600 milliamperes. It fluctuates at the beginning as the smartphone is trying to figure out how much energy it can get away with absorbing. And now the amount being absorbed is at about 1 ampere. How close you are to the 1 ampere mark depends upon how fast you turn the crank. And at about 4.4 volt, I'd say you're at a charge rate of 4 to 5 watts, which is pretty decent. There's more resistance now, but I'd say one could turn the crank at this speed for 10 to 15 minutes. The resistance is nice and even. The sound the generator makes is quite pleasant. Not very loud, other hand generators are a lot more noisy. So you could do this in the wilderness somewhere without disturbing all sorts of wildlife. 
I've attached a different smartphone now, a Samsung Note 2. The problem here is that the smartphone is drawing electricity at an irregular rate. It tries to absorb one ampere, then decides the voltage is too low, goes down to 500 milliamperes. This makes it very unpleasant to turn the crank as the resistance keeps fluctuating. You can hear the resistance fluctuation too. Now it seems to have set the charging voltage to 550 milliamperes, and while I can turn the crank at a regular pace now, I can't get the charging current to go any higher, so the smartphone has decided the power source isn't that great and to stick to 550 milliamperes so as not to overload it. Starting from scratch, I'm turning the crank faster from the outset. I saw 1 ampere for a moment, 600. It's very hard to achieve a decent charging rate with this device, and at some point the smartphone sets the charging level, which is at 650 this time, and even if I turn the crank faster it doesn't increase the charging level. That means that this type of phone is relatively tricky to charge and it sets a low charging level. So with this type of phone it might be better to charge a power bank instead. A power bank you know works well with a hand crank. Thus, you can achieve a maximum charging capacity and even if some energy is lost by transferring it from the power bank to the phone, it's still more efficient than trying to manually charge the phone with the fluctuating speeds and the throttled charging current. Of course, you have to actually know the charging rate to come to this conclusion, which is why it's a good idea to have one of these measurement devices, which tells you how much is being charged. And, after a while, you also get a feel for it. You notice you cannot pick up a regular rhythm, or there's not much resistance, which lets you know the charging rate is either irregular or pretty low. I've connected a little power bank with a maximum charging rate of 1 ampere. This is important as a power bank isn't the same as a smartphone, which regulates incoming current. A power bank charges the amount of current its maximum capacity allows. So, if it's a power bank that has a 2 amp charging current, it might try to absorb that amount from the hand crank, and if you turn fast, you can achieve a considerably higher energy generation than 1 ampere which is what the device is designed for, even if it says 2 ampere on the packaging. But this device doesn't have a current cap, so if you turn the crank hard, you'll be generating a lot more than 1 ampere, and I managed to break two hand cranks by doing this. So, at about 1.5 ampere charging voltage, the crank overloads you experience high resistance and then the device is broken. This means when attaching devices, use power banks with a maximum of 1 ampere charging current, as then nothing can go wrong. Also, if charging smartphones directly, which can also absorb a lot more than 1 ampere, make sure you don't turn the crank too fast so the smartphone thinks it can access more than 1 ampere as that can cause the same problem as a power bank with a maximum charging capacity of over 1 amp. As in, it might break your hand crank. Clearly, it's not ideal that a device with a lifelong guarantee doesn't have a current cap, which would prevent you from generating more electricity than the device can deal with, thus breaking the crank. Especially considering the device comes with the information that its capacity is at 2 amperes, Using the power bank, we have a steady charge at about 900 to 950 milliamperes, which is quite pleasant. And this is the ideal solution if the device you want to charge is one that doesn't set the charging level high enough. If I accelerate the mechanism, the charge still stays under 1 ampere because this power bank has a maximum charge of 1 ampere, so nothing can break. If I reduce the speed, less energy is generated circa 500 milliamperes at this moderate rate, which is about 2.5 watt, and if you have to or want to, you can easily keep this up for half an hour. If you switch arms, you can keep going for longer too. Here's another example of something you can charge. You can charge a torch too. The charge starts instantly, 
and depending upon the torch model, the charge is at the maximum charging rate. For this torch, that's 650 milliampères, which is the same amount it would absorb if plugged into a normal socket. 650 milliampères is a current that you can charge comfortably manually without getting exhausted. And so, you can use this to charge a torch on route 2 if you run out of energy. This hand crank is handy to have for emergencies or if you're in a tight spot where you have no access to electricity. You can also charge smaller devices such as this electric lighter. Thus you can use the hand crank to create fire, not only electricity. Charging this, we're at about 300 milliampères, which is the maximum charging capacity you'd get if you plugged it into the mains too. There's hardly any resistance, so you'll be turning quite fast. It would be more efficient to use a power bank at 1 ampere, as you'd have to spend considerably less time turning the crank. But, you can still just charge the lighter directly, and after a few minutes it would be charged enough that you could start a number of fires with it. Another classic people would be using this device for is an outdoor sat now. This one is charging at 440 milliampères. At 5 volt, that's about 2.5 watts. That's about the same rate devices such as these charge at when plugged into the mains. So using the hand crank doesn't make it take any longer, but you have to keep going for a while. For example, this device has a 4.5 watt hour battery. That means that if we have 4.5 watt hours in the battery, we'll need 6 watt hours, counting losses, to completely charge the device. And for 6 watt hours at a 2.5 watt charge, we'll have to turn the crank for a good 2 hours to completely charge the device. And as you can't sustain a steady charge over that time, having to switch hands and so on, it would probably take about 3 hours. I don't know if it's possible to keep that up for 3 hours, as I can't say I tried, but I doubt it. But let's get back to smartphones. The manufacturer says 2 minutes of charging is enough to make an emergency call. In 2 minutes at 4.5 watts you can generate about 0.15 watt hours. An iPhone X has a capacity of about 10 watt hours and 20 hours of talk time. So from the maths, 0.15 watt hours would yield about 15 minutes of talk time. Even if you halve that to be safe, it will certainly be enough for an emergency call. If you wanted to fully charge an iPhone X though, you'd have to maintain a regular charging pace for over 3 hours, so have fun with that. But okay, that's not really the purpose of the device. In conclusion, the Infinite Orbit is incredibly useful if you need to charge devices without having access to energy sources like sun, wind or mains power. It's very robust and well made, but the electronics are somewhat sensitive to overcurrent, which requires the user to take certain precautions depending upon what device they want to charge. If you stick to those precautions, however, the generator is very dependable and also quiet and efficient. The Infinite Orbit is probably the best USB hand crank available at this time. Thanks for watching and please check out www.pocketnavigation.de for more information.